Hi students, welcome to exercise 43, the binomial theorem. First of all, what is the binomial theorem? What is it associated to? Well, it's basically whenever you take a binomial and you make it to a certain power, what you're going to have is you're going to have a pattern develop. So if you take this binomial x plus y to the power of 1, you get x plus y. Well, that's pretty obvious. x plus y to the power of 2, well, you get this trinomial, x plus y to the power of 3, and so on. So when we talk about a binomial, <coughs> We usually state the first number in the binomial, the first term, that b is the second term, and n is the exponent. So pretty straightforward. All right, so let's take a look for some uh, patterns that are developing here. Okay, first of all, with the binomial expansion, um, the first term of the binomial is um, a, or whatever it is, what you want to call it. The second term is b. Okay, so when you call when as we mentioned here, the exponent of a, so if you look at the exponent of x here, okay, um, if you look at x, it goes x power 1, x to the power 0, this is x to the power 2, 1, 0, 3, 2, 1, 0, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So the exponent of a is decreasing by 1 on each term. So look, again, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. So the exponent of the first term is going to decrease by 1. The exponent of the second term, y, is going to increase by 1. So here there's no y, and then y1. 0, 1, 2. 0, 1, 2, 3. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's increasing by 1. And that's the exponent of the second term. Now, for the amount of terms... So notice that to the power of 1, there are two terms. To the power of 2, so a binomial squared, that gives you trinomial, right? So three terms. To the power of 3 gives you four terms. So there are always one more terms. So n plus 1, since the exponent is n, right? So the exponent is 4. There's always n plus 1 terms in the expansion. In the expansion. Okay? <clears throat> the uh, sum of the exponents in, of each term is equal to the exponent. So for example, here, if you add the exponent 3 and 1, it gives you 4. 2 and 2 gives you 4. 1 and 3 gives you 4. And same thing here, 2, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3. And those terms are obvious because there's just one exponent. So the, the sum of the exponents of each uh, term is equal to the exponent of the binomial. <clears throat> and now the, the coefficients. Okay, the coefficients, okay, just to identify them, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, okay. Those um, are, re are symmetric. They read the same from left to right. Okay, so it, the 1, 4, 6, 1, for example. Um, so this is the coefficients of the x plus y to the power of 4. So how we get the four coefficients, they're actually combinations. The first one comes from 4 choose 0, second one comes from 4 choose 1, 4 choose 2, 4 choose 3, 4 choose 4. Okay, so that would be true for all of them here. So this would be 3 choose 0, 3 choose 1, 3 choose 2, 3 choose 3. Okay, and that's uh, just something to, to make a, a note of. The first term is always going to have 4 choose 0. So that will represent the first term. The 1 represents the second term. 4 choose 4, which would be the fifth term. Okay, so we're going to expand this term. We've actually already expanded on the first page, but we're going to look at each individual piece. Okay, so when the, during the expansion, the coefficient of the first term will be 3 choose 0. Okay, so again, the 3 is the exponent. Choose 0 because that's the first term. And then you're going to have x to the power of the exponent, right? So x to the power of 3 for the first term. And the second term, y, is going to be to the power of 0. Okay, second term. So that'll be the first term. Second term here, the coefficient, we're going to be 3 choose 1. x is going to be x to the power of 2. y is going to be y to the power of 1. Now we're going to have 3 choose 2 x, which is the first term of the binomial, to the power of 1, y to the power of 2. And, hopefully I've got enough space here, 
And then we have 3 choose 3 with x to the power of 0 and y to the power of 3. So I'll put that outside the bracket. I'm putting it outside the bracket because in case we have a term that's not just y. Okay, well, 3 choose 0. You could use a calculator if you needed to, but this is just 1. How many ways can you choose 3 choose 0? You can only do it one way. And then you have x to the power of 3, y to the power of 0. So the first term would be x to the power of 3. 3 choose 1 is 3. And then you have x to the power of 2 and y to the power of 1. 3 choose 2 is also 3. And then you have x1, y2. 3 choose 3 is 1. Then x0 and y3. So I could have placed anything for x and y here. Okay, I could have put in 2x minus 1, for example, x squared plus 5x. Doesn't matter. All I would have to do is replace the x and y with those two terms and expand it and simplify it. All right, well, those numbers, the coefficients, um, they are associated to Pascal's triangle. And let's take a look at the numbers. So here you have 1, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1, 3, 3, 1, 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you guys notice a pattern, but if you guys notice, the two numbers above the next number in line sum up to the next number. So here, 6, 15 makes 21, 15, 20 makes 35, 10 makes 10, 10 makes 10, 20, 6, 4 makes 10. So the next line of the Pascal's triangle would be 1, 8, 28, 56, 70, 56, 28, 8, and 1. Okay, well, what does this have to do with the uh, uh, binomial theorem? Well, if you look closely, these numbers are the numbers that we had as the coefficients. Okay, so this line would be associated to x plus y to the power of 0. So that would be just 1. And then this next line over here, that would be x plus y to the power of 1. So if it's the power of 1, both coefficients would be 1. To the power of 2, to the power of 3, to the power of 4, and so on and so forth. So find the connection between Pascal's triangle and binomial theorem. They are the coefficients of each term. Okay. Determine the numeric coefficients of the sixth term of the binomial expansion of x plus y to the power of 7. Well, x plus y to the power of 7 is this line. Because power of 7, remember, this is the power of 1, power of 2, power of 3. So if this is the power of 7, the sixth term would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. The coefficient would be 21. I'll just circle it so we can identify it. Okay. There are situations when Pascal's triangle won't give you the final coefficient, right? This won't be the final coefficient of each term. And that'll happen if the coefficients of your terms inside the binomial aren't 1. So, if the terms inside the binomial do not have coefficients of 1. So, for example, if we had 2x minus 1 to the power of 5, this 2 here would change some of those coefficients. Because going back, okay, I'm just going to move up for a second here. So, if I go back up here, if I had a 2x here, 2x to the power of 3, well, that'll give me an 8. So that would actually change the coefficient of that term. Okay, so that's the only time where those Pascal's triangle will still be involved, but these, this 2 here would change the coefficients of the majority of the terms. All right, so let's say I don't want to find every single term. I just want to find individual terms. So every single term can be identified using this formula. Notice that this formula is on your formula sheet. So any term, k plus 1, so for example, if I wanted term 5, k would be 4. k plus 1, so 4 plus 1 is 5. Okay, any term that you're looking for, 
can be given using the coefficient, which is coming from the Pascal's triangle. That's the combination that we saw on the last page. And then we take the first term to the power of n minus k. So if n is, for example, n is uh, exponent of 5, you would have 5. And if you're looking for the third term, k is 2. So 5 minus 2 is 3. So you'd have first term to the power of 3, and b, which is second term to the power of k. All right, so first term of the binomial, second term, exponent. Nothing's different here. Now the value of k, k as I just mentioned, we'll, we'll give another example specifically. So for example, if we are asked to find the sixth term, we're going to use k equals to 5. Because if you're finding the term k, term k plus 1, I'm going to look, look for the term 5 plus 1, which in turn gives me term 6. So notice that k equals 5 will give us term 6. All right, so determine the ninth term of the binomial expansion of x minus 2 to the power of 12. So I, actually, I can actually determine exactly what the ninth term will be using this formula. I'll leave the formula out here. Okay, so if I'm finding the ninth term, okay, I hope you guys understood that k should be equal to 8. So the ninth term will be t, 8 plus 1. I usually like writing the 8 plus 1 to remind myself that the k value is 8. And then the n choose k, okay, your n is the exponent, so 12 in our case, right, and then choose 8. And then the first term is x to the power of 12 minus 8. So this is going to be to the power of 4. And the second term is going to be negative 2 to the power of 8. So the ninth term, so I can now use 9 now, is n choose 8. You'll have a calculator for this, so feel free to bring out your calculator and test it out. Is 495 times x to the power of 4 and negative 2 to the power of 8, which is 256. Notice that's going to be positive. Right, because you have a negative 2 to the power of an even number, which is going to be 256 positive. And now, to combine this whole term, all we have to multiply is the coefficients. Notice we'll only have x to the power of 4. And what you get is the ninth term will give us 126,720 x to the power of 4. Okay, so something to notice here, as I mentioned in the last page, this number would not correspond to the Pascal's triangle because this negative 2 here also is attached. This number would be Pascal's triangle's number, but because of this negative 2 to the power of 8, this final number, the coefficient, is not from the Pascal's triangle. All right, one more example to finish it off. Binomial is a little bit more difficult because you have a fraction here. Determine the fourth term in the binomial expansion. Nothing's too different. If I'm finding the fourth term, k is equal to 3, right? Okay, so now I'm looking for the term 3 plus 1, which is equal to 9 choose 3, right? So I'm just filling in n, c, k, times first term, which is x again, so nothing much different here, to the power of n minus 3. And then the second term, this one's a little bit more complicated, 1 over 2x, sorry, 2x squared to the power of 3. So that's just power of k. Again, going back to this formula right here, right? So I've just filled in this formula. Okay, so now I'm just going to simplify. So you have term 4 is equal to 9 choose 3, which is equal to 84. x to the power of 6. Notice I keep brackets around it until I put it all together. And then here, um, what you have, I'll just rewrite the terms since I'm I haven't really simplified any exponents yet. Okay, so term 4 is going to be equal to 84 times x to the power of 6, or this would be a point, times we have 1 over 2x squared to the power of 3. A mistake that's often done is the people attach the 3 to the x squared, but they forget to attach the coefficient to the 3. So notice that 2 to the power of 3 is 8, so this term is going to become, sorry, this point again, 1, because 1 cubed is 1, and then 2 cubed is 8, and then x squared becomes x to the power of 6, because you multiply the exponents. 
And if I simplify this term completely, notice that this 84 divided by 8, we're going to simplify that. Okay, so you can either write 10.5 or you could write 21 halves. So that's just the, the fraction simplified. And notice the x's to the power of 6 are going to cancel out. So all I'm left with is 21 halves. And because the x's cancel out, there's no x's. Okay, so this term would be a constant. So the fourth term, because of this x squared in the denominator, would actually be a constant without any x's. All right, guys, that's the lesson. And I'll see you in class.